now what the fuck are we supposed to do? This is some real pretty shit now, man. You finished. I, I just, I, I can't, man. I can't with that. It's like the best. <laughs> Bill Paxton's like the best thing ever. It's awesome. I like how he's got spit coming out of his mouth. <laughs> he's freaking out. He's like, Bleh. You know, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to say, man. <laughs> he's like the perfect, like, whiny, you know, just oh, awesome. bitching private that nothing's going right, you know. He's great, man. <laughs> and he redeems himself, too, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know, man. Hey, everybody, welcome to the sixth or seventh episode of Protagonist Antagonist. It's uh, BC and I came together and we said, you know what we love? We love movies, man. You know what we love about movies? Everything. I'm like a virtual IMDb internet movie database. Uh, and it's in my head, all this movie stuff, and I don't know what to do with it. So I said, you know what, BC? Let's do a show. Let's do another podcast. And who else likes movie? None other than Matt Klein. <laughs> if it's not aliens, it's Star Wars. And if it's not Star Wars and aliens, it's something else. If you've not checked out Battle Tribe on Etsy, we'll drop a link later on. Um, his artwork is absolutely incredible. And before we embark on this incredible journey, talking about the 1986 aliens classic, Matt What's 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 your daytime job, bro? And I love talking about this. <laughs> what is that daytime job? Because I didn't even know until we actually had you on a podcast. I'm a NYPD detective sketch artist. So I do all the different composite and wanted pictures you see on the news and stuff for uh, New York City. Me and uh, another two guys. So um, that's my daytime job. Really cool. A lot of fun. You get to use the talent to help a lot of people. And it's a very rewarding career. Now, you speak about being a rewarding career. But as let's, I'm I'm over here talking about all sorts of other things, listening to YouTube in my other ear, going, "What am I doing?" But Matt, there have been a lot of TV shows about the NYPD. What is your favorite TV show about the NYPD? NYPD Blue. Yeah, NYPD SVU. Blue. SVU is good. They're, they're all good. You know what it is? They all have like a piece. I wouldn't say there's like one definitive, but they all have a they all have a piece that's pretty good, you know. But the best movie about the NYPD is The Other Guys. Yes, I, I actually watched it the other the other day. Showed <laughs> up with my feet. It's like, oh, oh, that movie's classic, man. I remember the first time seeing it, and uh, The Rock and uh, Samuel Jackson jump to their death. I was, <laughs> You're just like, what I was like, like <laughs> <laughs> now BC, have you ever done a desk pop? Uh, twice. <laughs> no, wow. never. Um, but internal I'll... affairs, if you're out there right now, <laughs> yeah. at least take yeah. note of that. No, you're right with that movie though. The best part about it is like the guys who get excited about doing the paperwork and the guys who get excited about you know doing the the chasing and all that, and it just yeah. kind of averages out. You know, it's not as drastic, but it is true. Great movie. Okay, I gotta ask, what's up with aliens? Why do you guys like aliens so much? Me, I love it just because it's fucking badass as aliens, man. But what drew you to this movie? You want to go first, Sanders? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Since you're the guest, I'm gonna just jump in and and interrupt. And you, oh, you know, just jump yeah, in, yeah, oh, man. Let's jump what... right over you. No, I will say this. I'll keep it short, and then I'll jump back on. I saw it when it first came out, so I was young and. I loved war movies at that time or military movies and I liked sci-fi, but to merge the two, it just seemed like very realistic, which we'll talk about later why that is. Um, and then on top of that, the whole idea of, you know, this, this unit being isolated and then having to fight the aliens and then the characters that we were just talking about, like with Bill Paxton and stuff and the, the dialogue. And it's why you can still watch it today. And it's still, I mean, like without like all the cgi and stuff just the the amount of special effects they did yeah it's, a, it's incredible dude it's it's a it stands the test of time and I, it's just the accuracy in the way they depict the military for me in it yeah yeah no, i totally agree it, to me it's on the list of perfect movies there's never there's not a scene in the movie where you're, you're like you're falling asleep or like skipping forward like any part mm -hmm. of the movie you drop right in and also too for me it's such a gritty movie and like down to earth like it just gives it that realism that makes it rewatchable and it's just timeless to me. You know, it falls in there with all the greatest movies and stuff. But anytime this comment, I have to interrupt because this comment that just came across here by OIF Brewer, 
I've never seen aliens. So, brother, I know what you're doing tonight when you get off of here. You're gonna be yeah. like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch aliens. That's yeah. Dope. Hey, and and when you when you watch aliens, go ahead and make a list of everything they do correctly in there, from the whiny privates to the squared away squad leader to the dialogue. It, awesome. Just make a list. You know, <laughs> you know. That movie is full of lines. So many <laughs> lines. It's so good. <laughs> So, uh oh, I can't. Oh, no, he's, he's muted. You got to hit that. Oh, there we go. I, I'm trying to. I really need someone to help me out here. I need to get my nephew in here, like to run all these like banners and all this other stuff because I'm always like, I'm trying to do like 50 different things at once and it's not working. But one thing that I, I found really interesting was they didn't shoot this movie in sequence, they shot it like all over the place. But the one scene they did shoot at the end of the movie was when they were all getting together and getting geared up because they wanted them to all feel like they were like a unit. So like they were molding and we all know this, we were in the military. He's like, yeah. if they shot that scene in the beginning, it would have been like, eh, you know, they wouldn't have felt like they were like melded together, but everybody, the scene I'm talking about is like when they're frost all gearing up, it's like, they're like, they're ready to go in and boom, they go mm -hmm. in. And they, they felt like a real military unit. And I think that is because, you know, they did have some prior service people in there. Yeah. Like um, the actor, Al Matthews, who plays Sergeant Apone. Yeah. I don't I, I vaguely remember his back, but he was a um, Vietnam vet. And I think he was um, one of the first Marines that had a field promotion since World War II. Yeah. I could be wrong. I'd be right. But um, no, it's scrolling across the bottom. He was. Yeah. Really cool, man. But, That's um, awesome, man. Yeah. He said in a, he said in an interview, he was talking about <laughs> how the actors would often point the weapons, you know, even though they're obviously mock-up weapons, but they would point the weapons and muzzle their teammates and he would get mad. And it's kind of funny to watch him in an interview. Cause he's like, basically I tell him, you know, I'll, I'll shove that weapon up their ass. <laughs> they do that again. You know? And he says that he's like, that's the military background in me. And that's what we wanted on the set. Like, even though it's a movie, it needs, it needs to be correct, you know, and it comes yeah. across in the movie. Like you can tell, at least when I and when I watch it now, it's like you can tell it's probably not even like for him. It's not even acting. It's like, hey, I get to be back with the squad, you know, and waking yeah, them up, yeah. doing yep. first call and stuff. Man, that's great. Yeah, they let them personalize their equipment and armor and stuff mm -hmm. like, you know, like very Vietnam. That whole movie is very Vietnamish, you know, and the aliens and acting like the the Viet Cong and stuff. But it just makes it more grittier and realer and more enjoyable to me. Yeah, and the and the machine gunners are like the, the badasses. You know I know, I mean? like I love they it. got they've got awesome. all the attitude. <laughs> you know, it's like awesome. yeah. you know what's funny too? It's like so many like for, first of all, aliens is like the golden standard for video games from the, like when you play a video game and you have a motion tracker on the side that tells that's aliens, like you know, going yeah. through the corridors, aliens. There's so much ingrained in video games and movies going out mm -hmm. that's from that. But yeah. One big thing I thought was awesome is too is like most movies you have like a squad of characters they're all like throwaway. Mm -hmm. All the characters mm -hmm. all have their little moments in the in the you know in the camera and stuff you know like you mm -hmm. remember Drake and Frost and you know all the different <laughs> ones and stuff. Yeah, and, uh, a lot of movies just don't have that at all. Yeah, it, if you, like we talked about Platoon now like two weeks ago, maybe, yeah. And, yeah. and Platoon the same thing like you watch Platoon every character in there stands out like no one is forgettable like it's yeah. ev everybody's a character in a platoon it's the same thing here you see like you said frost and, and everybody they have their either moment to shine or to kind of bring drama into it or to, to actually solve a problem and be like yeah we need to do this or yeah. seal this corridor you know or like when they start consolidating all their weapons and they're like okay <laughs> and they kind of yeah. get there <laughs> they get they're like up up you know we got like yeah, yeah, this yeah. many mags this many grenades like to me when a kid when i was a kid i was like that's like even when i would play guns and stuff i was like oh that's that's what you're supposed to do is consolidate all your weapons and ammunition and stuff and then and divvy it back out or redistribute it yeah well, I tell you what is like, I don't want to digress back to Platoon because Platoon is one of the best yeah. movies ever. Mm -hmm. But I'm listening to the Oliver Stone book right now. I think it's like Journey into Light. And he talks about making Platoon and he talks about like how there was a real Barnes and how there was a real. Oh, yeah. But He's they were both part of two different things. And no, he didn't kill him. He's like a lot of people later on. It's like, you know, Oliver Stone should be put up for war crimes. He's like, no, this is a <laughs> script, people. It's a script. <laughs> Yeah. But the realism in those movies, and I think that is what happened with this movie too, is because 
you have a lot of veterans, you have a lot of people out there who expect reality. And if you add that little extra punch to it, Aliens was well uh, uh, ahead of its time for a non-war movie. Like, this is like, you know, like badass, like, wow. Yeah. And James Cameron, I mean, up until then, what did he have, Terminator? Yeah, and and, and um, Piranha 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't Piranha. even start with the fucking Piranha movies. And everybody, you can <laughs> swear on this one. Yo, but honestly, though, like Cameron, though, he's he's – like I like there's a lot like I'm a huge Spielberg fan, a lot of other mm -hmm. but Cameron is definitely the most steady. Like he a lot of his movies like Terminator, you know, True Lies, just like yeah. real gritty, you know, you know, um just awesome job, you know. Did he did he do the Abyss? Yes. No? Oh, yeah, right. Oh. Dude, the, that's another movie too, like you know, just awesome. And you know, got Michael Bean in that too, playing the, the douchebag. Yeah, yeah. yeah Michael <laughs> Bean. <laughs> and what's his name? Bill Paxton, seriously, Bill Paxton in True Lies. Oh, Dude, like, you gotta be kidding me, man. It's like the fantastic. best thing ever. Vet gets him wet. Man. <laughs> hey, can you hey, can you name every movie that Bill Paxton and Michael Bean's been in that they've been in together? Um the dynamic duo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Terminator One. Okay. They were aliens. Um mm -hmm. Shit, man. Don't make me an idea. What other movie? Um, no, I don't know if there were any other movies together. Tombstone. Oh, oh yeah. Tombstone. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I don't even know what to say right now. And uh, Lords of Discipline. But you got to go Ooh, way. Yeah, discipline. I never saw that. Yeah. Way so back. check out Lords yeah. Discipline, man. If you get some time this that is weekend, a great movie, man. Amazing yeah. movie based on a Pat Conroy book. But yeah. if you go back and watch, they're like they're very young, and like Bill Paxton is just a small part in that. Yeah. Uh, Michael Bean's like one of the one of the main uh, characters in it. But yeah, I man. think that's all the movies. But man, they've done quite a few together. Yeah, you know, it's the whole backstory of Bill Paxton is really cool. He was he worked on sets. With Jim Cameron back in the day on old sci-fi movies, uh, mm -hmm. Roger Corman movies, oh, yeah. so he, mm -hmm. he took him along for the ride, which is really cool. And um, you know, had him in a lot of his movies and stuff. And like when Cameron was doing all the deep sea diving, he was like, "Hey, I want you to go with me." Bill Paxton's like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that dude, man. I watch anything that he was in, even yeah. like Weird Science. We've talked about that before. Yeah, about Weird Science. Shit and weird science. <laughs> but yeah, he's an awesome character in Aliens, though, because he comes in as a cocky. You know, cocky mm -hmm. dude, and then you become when the shit hits the fan, he freaks the fuck out, and then he, he, <laughs> mm -hmm. he, he yeah. redeems himself. You know, <laughs> yeah, which makes it so realistic. You know, he's that he's that loud mouth. You know what I mean? Like, and everybody, that scene is awesome. Everybody's got him. Yeah, <laughs> that scene is awesome. We got nukes, sharp sticks. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I gotta pull this up. <laughs> I'm gonna, we're gonna try. Okay, we we can pull up YouTube stuff. Oh, there's Tansy. What's up, Tansy? Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, we're gonna try to pull something up here. We're gonna try oh, not to get kicked off of YouTube like we did last time. Oh, what do they do? They they kick you off once in a while, but that's why we keep it down about 15 seconds. And I found every private hustle scene from <laughs> Aliens and HD. So good. So good. <laughs> okay, we're sharing this now. Okay. Here we go. Any questions? <laughs> what is it, private? How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? <laughs> <Good>, Hudson. <laughs> Keep on going. I'm ready, man. Ready to get it on. Oh, he's ready to get it on. Go on, express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. You can't beat it, man. I gotta, I'm putting this up on, uh, on Instagram later. I'm just going to pull all five minutes. Check it out. I am the <laughs> ultimate badass. <laughs> <laughs> we're pulling that sucker off. We're not getting kicked off YouTube tonight. <laughs> nope. Tansy said he literally made that number up, that 15-second rule. That's Tansy awesome. said he made it up, but, hey, it seems to be the magic number, right? You know, he literally, when I was reading the um, the IMDb trivia on this, he, like, just ad libs so much shit. So I mean, seriously, I mean, you so can't good. fucking... I believe it. And that's why it's so good. You know, probably, like, you... like, like James Cameron knew, all right, I'm just going to step back and let people do what they do, you know? It's genius. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> you can't, I mean, like seriously... <laughs> His armor, he's got like the big skulls. His like, mm -hmm. uh, that was <laughs> did you make a shirt of that? 
Yeah. Was hey, everybody oh, no, 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 no. That's pretty cool though. He did um what the fuck was it? He has Luis on it. Luis, I think his wife's name on his arm or toe and stuff. Mm. But, um, really hey, uh, while we're talking about your shirts and stuff, and like maybe sometime bringing that up into the reality of aliens is making mm. a Bill Paxson shirt, man. And yeah. let's take a look at your um I do want to show everybody some of your work before we jump really into this conversation tonight because okay. your work is absolutely amazing and i don't like to really blow smoke up your ass because it's you know no you're just telling the favorite. truth you're not i mean <laughs> seriously i wear this one shirt where's where's look at this this is we're listening right now i mean if you're listening everybody go to battle tribe on etsy and if you're not on instagram go to matt rendar on instagram because if you're listening to this as a podcast you really do need to see matt's work and it's so much Star Wars centric, but it's like Star Wars operator centric. And I do want to ask you, how did how did you get into this? Um, about 2018, I just thought, you know, Instagram for you know for better or worse is an awesome platform mm -hmm. to um, what do you call it? To put your artwork out there, and I just started doing it and started catching, and you know, people enjoy it, and it just motivates me to do more and more, and it's a great outlet. And then you know, and being able to have a shop, you'd be able to get it out there to people. It's really pretty awesome stuff, you know. And and I'm gonna say this about the shirts because I'm a like a I'm addicted to buying t-shirts, and I'm <laughs> I'm like a a critic too because look at that. Uh, your shirts too are like really soft. Yeah, like the athletic type. Yeah, color, yeah. So they fit just right. Um, but I've got that Princess Leia just, operator. Oh, oh yeah, 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 or it's... Princess Leah, depending on where you're from in the U.S. <laughs> but down here we call her Princess Leia, but uh, <laughs> Leia. Shirt, yeah, I wear that shirt and people always go crazy over it. Yeah, you know, no, and, awesome. and people are always like, "Where do I get it?" You know, then I explain it to them, and then of course, you know, I'm quite sure when they go on there, they're buying ten other different shirts because you've yeah. got everything on there from Die Hard. Like, I, I'm going Predator. through everything. I'm like, there's too much. Yeah, no, there's not too much. He needs no, more up there, much. man. Seriously, like you've got like a uh, Predator. You've got aliens. You've got a lot of Star Wars merging with like uh, military. I know, man. The sound uh, was it light and sound or the um yeah sound yeah 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 the the band shirts uh, silence and light silence yeah. and light I knew that didn't sound right um yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh there's the uh, Ripley yeah I did a Saint uh, Ripley, Ripley yeah Saint Ripley, yeah, too. Saint Ripley. Yeah. I gave her the quad the quad uh, goggles the PBS <laughs> yeah forties whatever they are. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, uh, let's do a giveaway tonight. I'll buy Maddle Ship. If you guys uh, drop some comments, you hit like, subscribe, or whatever, and you uh, just join the conversation, tell your friends and family about this show, and also the protectors, um, I will be more than happy to send you a Rambo 24 shirt. And I'm sure what? I'll buy a shirt from you from Matt, and we'll, we'll do all sorts of cool shit together. But seriously, I mean, your artwork's incredible, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I do, I do, I really need a Bill Paxa shirt, man. And, and it looks like I, a tribute, man. I that know. guy's like the best. I, I actually, I went to, what the hell did I do? I think it was Comic Con 2012. And I met, I met Lance Hedrickson. Oh. Uh, you know, Aces. And um, he signed an autograph for me. Cool as shit. Like I caught him <laughs> like running between places. Yeah. I, they um there was a video game coming out an aliens video game and they had a booth and i knew two people that were there and when i got to them they're like you just missed bill paxton by like 10 oh. minutes so uh. i was so bummed man i was like damn it no. you know he, he stopped by took a bunch of pictures and stuff and then like you know he was busy ran out but i always wish i would have met him for like a second you know but um mm -hmm. bc movie bill paxton lance hendrickson best movie hold on what now the best lance movie they were together Yes, they weren't together outside of this movie. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Um, come, on. come on. We're not yeah, going to I, sh I know. I should know it. Um, mm. uh, not Twister. Uh, no. Twister? Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Twister no, even what's come that from? vampire movie? Um, yep, uh -uh. see, yeah. Yep, you know, somebody else is in that, too. Yes. Yeah, like dark. Uh, I can't remember, man. Something. No lie. Uh, oh, Matt, I don't even know what to say right now, man. <laughs> yeah, I man. don't. I really don't. I mean, I don't. It's, you know, I we can have see that. have not seen Aliens tonight. Who are going to see it? But you have yeah. got to see this movie. It's called Near Dark. Near Dark. Near Dark. That's right. I got it right. Yeah. And there's actually three or three cast members are in it because isn't yeah. um Jeanette Goldstein's in it? Yeah, yeah Jeanette Goldstein's in it yeah. as well. 
that's a that's a rugged movie, man. Oh, it <laughs> is, man. Grizzly. That's Don't even, they never say they're vampires either, too. Adrian Pastar is a kid, man. He's oh. like young back then. Is it from the 80s or early 90s? Yeah, right around yeah. The 80s. Not the 80s. I think it's like 88 or something. Oh, that's mm-hmm. even better, man. The movies, were, they really pushed it back then. Man. That was that was an intense damn oh, yeah, man. movie, man. Like, they're killing, like, no kids. Right. and you know, Edward right. Fur- Was Edward Furlong in it? No, I don't think so. But um, oh, I think he was. Was it Jill Bigelow, Cameron's third or second wife directed? Oh, uh, no. Homer was Joshua John Miller. I thought that was Edward Furlong. Jenny Wright is May. Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton was. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I just said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Not a huge cast. A lot of, like, you know, background people who have been, like, Robert Winley was also in Terminator, background guy. Yeah. James LaGrosse is teenage, LaGrosse is teenage cowboy, biker and bar. Yeah, that's a great movie. Everybody out there, check out Near Dark. Yeah. Okay, Near Dark. Twilight, yeah. Near Dark. So let's talk about aliens. Okay, we have, um, is that the poster you have behind you with everybody? Yeah, it? so there was a little mm-hmm. Comic-Con near my house. I went to it like a couple years ago. It was all right. And then... This year they were having, I saw it on Instagram that they're going to have five of the cast members from Aliens. So I was like, so me and my son, we went on a mission. We went out there. Um, Michael Bean was there, Janik, um, you know, who played Corporal Hicks. And then you have Janik Goldstein, who played Vasquez. You had Mark Ralston, who played uh, Drake, Rico Ross, that played um, Frost. And then you had um, William Hope, who played uh, Lieutenant Gorman, everybody's favorite uh, <laughs> lieutenant. <laughs> How many combat drops? They're like, oh, <laughs> so yeah, we went there and you know it's endless what you can get signed by anybody. So I was like, I had this poster and I was like that I did for aliens and stuff. I was like, let me bring that. So I rolled it up, brought it out there, got a couple other autographs and stuff, and um they all signed it. They were really, really cool. Wow. It was man. nice meeting them, you know, and um it was cool too because Michael Bean remembered me and my son because we saw him 2019 at New York Comic Con and like mm. He was a big law law enforcement supporter. So mm-hmm. he was like, he found out what I did. So he's like, oh, you know, I usually wear a shirt. So I was like, you're going to be here tomorrow? And Michael Bean's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, I'll bring you a shirt and stuff. So the next day I came back. I brought a shirt, like my sketch artist shirt. And then um, what do you call it? On the back, I, the back of it was a, um, an alien drawn a wanted poster. And the wanted poster is a predator. So he, <laughs> like, and then I brought him like a challenge coin stuff. So I brought it to him and he was like, yo, this is awesome. And he threw it on him and he was wearing it all day and shit. Really nice. Yeah. But it was cool that he remembered me and my son, you know, mm-hmm. stuff. But, that's, um, you know, that's they were, the kind of they were all you great. Mean. Like Mark Ralston was awesome. You know, and my son's a huge uh, Shawshank fan. So he was talking about that and stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, all classics, you know. That movie, yeah. you put Shawshank on any time. Yeah, you watch it. I don't care what part of the movie it is. You just watch it. Solid movie, you know. But um, yeah, they well, got, that was it. Yeah, you got to think too. Like, if you were an actor in Aliens, and like we said earlier, if people are still excited about it and still creating art or still creating like a vibe, like you can see when people are being honest when you see them. And I'm quite sure fans still like, like you just said, come up and hug them and tell them how great the movie was. Yeah, and it was made, you know, so many decades ago. Yeah. You got to be like proud of that and be like, yeah, yeah, I was part of that. You know, no matter what role you played in it, even that guy, Paul uh, Reiser or whatever, yeah. like he was the Paul ultimate Reiser. bad guy in there. <laughs> so random, right? He was like the worst of the bad guy. He was yeah. such an asshole, seriously. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Just die. I mean, that is the thing yeah, about that's it. What I'm saying. Like, you have bad guys who you don't realize that are like actually the worst. They're worse than the aliens. Yeah. That, that yeah, that's yeah. the camera off awesome you know yeah. when they're stuck in that room so so it kind of goes to show you it's like that you got a you got you know an enemy that is the this aliens and they're just basically bugs all over the the planet but really paul riser there is the is the real enemy you know what i mean it's like yeah. that's yeah, no, that's really. who that, and he's this guy in like a you know nice shirt and all that he's got all the money mm-hmm. he's part of the corporation you yeah. know and it's kind of the same running thing that you see in um avatar you know what I mean? It's kind of that almost that same idea. Uh, and James James Cameron did Avatar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be making that up. I don't know. No, no, he didn't. He didn't. No, he did. Yeah. And there, it's he funny kind of, too because there's a lot of Avatar stuff, like especially in the beginning with the military with the, the mm-hmm. PMT, that feels like aliens. You know, like the yeah, whole yeah. Movies, the the vehicles, the mech suits. You know, yeah. everything. It's all it's very aliens and stuff. You know. It's, it's, so like one of the 
one of the things, like if you've ever read uh, Starship Troopers, the oh, book, awesome. yes, right, awesome. So, but then when I watched the movie, even back then, I think that came out maybe when I was in the army. But when you go back and watch like, Starship Troopers back then, I really wish they would have made. <laughs> that's a whole know, other podcast, that's right? Whole, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I just want to say that I wish that Starship Troopers would have been more like Aliens, you know, truer yeah. to the book and and kind of that way. But yeah. I, I'm a huge fan of Starship Troopers, but right. it's a separate entity. Like it's different. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like, See, but I like I was, it. yeah. That is definitely we definitely need to do Starship Troopers. Starship man. Troopers classic. Man. <laughs> when did I come Yo, out? friggin' um, what's it? Ninety seven. What's his name? Yeah. I I did some artwork and um, Michael Catherine Ironside and commented on it. I had a I Michael had a, Ironside had a heart attack. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man. I messaged him too. He didn't respond though. <laughs> uh, now he would. Like, like, I know. I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah. No, that I mean, that, I wasn't saying it was like a bad movie, but but I was so spoiled. The book, by, is, the book is way insane. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, and that's one of those things like I'll quote it sometimes and people are like, what are you talking about? I'm like Starship Troopers. Oh, that's, that's a it. book. I know. I love you know, the like, like the yeah. I love the outfits and the oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the PR. It's like, oh, my gosh. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's my there's, side, those are like best. there is so much trivia about aliens it's 108 i mean there's like 300 trivia things hit us with a question i can yeah, guarantee right. you one of us knows okay Alan. i'll make something up if i don't know <laughs> uh, i don't know if i scrolled this on the bottom yet but what did they make the mobile troop carrier out of oh i know what it is what do they make the mobile you, troop carrier out of the, 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 arm, <laughs> the armored personnel carrier yeah yeah you know go what, ahead you know, go ahead what do you got it's um it's actually a, a, a uh, what do you call it? A tow truck trailer for um, 747 or yeah. for airline plane. Oh, shit. And the cool thing, too, is they built it and they had to reinforce the set to handle the weight. But anytime you see the Marines go into it, they never go into it. The interior is a totally different set. There was there was no room in the actual vehicle for them. Oh, that's anything. awesome, man. So, <laughs> the truck oh, weighed 75 it. tons. Yeah. I love it. Every time I was in a Bradley in Iraq, I always imagined. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Your head's bouncing around. And shit. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> so far, I you're I saying like you're saying like Bill Paxton quotes and some of the uncle. Oh, yeah, was, like, man. I did yeah, a lot of predator jo jokes in the back of the um, <laughs> yeah. Bradley. <laughs> Matt in Iraq, I would love to see that. I mean, what oh, it was, you it was great. Like, Were you there at the same time I was in 05, 06? Yeah, I was. Um, I was, 06, yeah, yeah. was January 05 to January 06. The second time and the first time was 03. But um yeah, different different world then now. If you're looking back. Oh, can you imagine being on a set during the scenes? Oh man, I can't even imagine. Awesome. I would love to be in this movie, man. I would just want to be in a background. No, just the back, yeah, just the back. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I just want to be like that's the only thing I want to do in life is I want to be like a red shirt. I want to just get killed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I do get killed in Clown Motel too. Do of, you? Oh, I do. Yeah, I get killed by a clown. Out. Man. Oh, it's horrible. My, it doesn't come out my, yet. It comes out soon. One of my friends is in Sharknado Three. I think oh, he was in. Yeah. He was in Universal Studios, and they're like, anybody they had signs up. If anybody is in this area between these times, you might be in a movie. And you can mm. see like the actor, and then he's blurred behind them. His face, his goatee, <laughs> all in there. <laughs> oh man, I, uh, you know, I just I love it, man. Just I want to be the red shirt. Piccolo <laughs> gets killed again. Right, man. Piccolo's dead. Do you have some more trivia, man? Because I got to redeem myself. Oh, I'm I'm afraid now. I don't even know what to say now. Hold on. I don't. Th I think Matt's going to answer every one of them. No. And actually add to it, like oh, he's going to answer. Does the film take place. What's that? that? What year does the film take place? Oh, I think I know. -ish. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't. I have no clue. Uh, twenty one seventies. Oh, twenty one seventy nine. Look at this. Damn. I don't even. You know, I'm so glad we have you on yeah. the show because uh, <laughs> I yeah. suck. Oh, it's how like, many <laughs> times can I reference Clown Motel three? Well, it's Clown Motel two. I'm gonna be in Clown Motel three. Come on, because <laughs> you get killed by a clown. Are you in the IMBD? I'm gonna check it out. I am actually. I am an IMDb. <laughs> That's <Come> awesome. <laughs> Fox and Friends. There it is. The film takes place in 2179. This is derived from Ripley's statement about Burke's transmission to the colony on six twelve seventy nine. Damn, dude, that was impressive. Yeah, yo, I'm a huge. There's like a couple movies that like I know everything about. It's like I'm not, I'm not proud of it. What's Ripley's uh, yeah, first name? That's true. 
don't know what it is. <laughs> What's Ripley's first name? Does she have a first name or is she just Ripley? I don't know. I think it's just Oh, yeah, she's got a first name. Yeah, yeah. But we just don't know what it is. I, no, I no, can no, look it up. It's Ellen. Ellen. See, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't bring that stuff. I just brought that off the top you of my head. You really setting me up to show the world. The world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that's impressive. Man. No way. I didn't know James Remar was going to be Michael oh. Bean's character. You want to hear yeah. the whole story with that? Yeah, I'm let's it. hear it now. I'll tell you the whole story with that. He's actually in the movie for like two scenes. Mm. So they were very nice about it, but throughout the years, it, it it finally came out. But he was originally because. Jim Cameron didn't want to cast like the same people over and over again. Yeah. So he had James Remar come. And so when they all sat down to design their armor, he put his own stuff on his armor. So he made a heart with a locket, like, like locked onto it mm -hmm. for some weird reason. So he would, at time, place of occurrence, he might have had a pet, uh, I can't even pronounce it. He went to the airport <laughs> and um, was found with some substance and they revoked uh, his passport and kicked him back. Yeah. So Gail Ann heard, you know, uh, Cameron's wife at the time made a phone call, called Michael Bean, like, hey, what's up? Is your you know, passport up in order? And he's like, yeah. So they flew him over. He jumped into the armor and, you know, any, everybody had personalized armor. So he was jumping yeah. into the remark armor and then just filmed the scene. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you know, starting filming, but um, the one scene when they first entered the hive, it was like this big crazy scene they filmed. Mm -hmm. Remar's in that, but you don't see his face; he has the back of his head. So they just kept the scene in there and stuff. But um, he had a little damn. Supposedly he had cocaine on him. So. He does, and, and he was in the Warriors, the, the Warriors. second greatest yeah. movie ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just did the Warriors, man. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. There's photographs of him too in the armor and stuff on set. So I wonder how that movie would have been. You know. What movie they were saying that um yeah was a full metal jacket was getting uh I had the trivia up. I don't know if I played it yet. Yeah. But the trivia was up that um full metal jacket was being produced or at the same time in England and they were all hang out afterwards. Yeah. Rico Ross. Oh, there it is. According to Lance during the production analysis, the film Full Metal Jacket was also being shot. That's awesome, man. Mm. Can you imagine hanging out with the full metal jacket guys? Yeah. That's another fucking <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Rico Ross, the guy who played Frost, he was mm -hmm. offered he, he had a role offered a role in that movie, and but he had to choose because they were both filmed at the same time. So he picked aliens over full metal jacket. He said he says it all the time in like interviews and stuff. But um yeah, full metal jacket's classic too. Yeah, but uh, you know, you could be a background guy in full metal jacket, and that's a great thing about aliens, is there's not a big cast. No, no, yeah, you know? yeah, it's just a small team, but that's you know. Like we said earlier, that's what's so great about it. There was a comment earlier about the pods looking like the things from uh, Stranger Things. Yeah. Like, well, isn't that like, I mean, that was on purpose, right? Weren't those dudes like huge I fans so. of aliens? I'm maybe? sure they were. Oh, they yeah. Were always... Stranger Things is, has everything in it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah I was going to say. I, every, I re was... every like, you know. Oh, look at this. Um one of the alien eggs is now at Smithsonian Institute in Washington. I gotta go down there and see if it's really there. That's it. I hope it is. I got a I got a good trivia question for you. The oh, um, I, I don't know. If it's a hard one, but um, the when they go into the hive, you know the the what do you call it? The processing station. Mm -hmm. It was filmed in a deactivated um. I think it was a, a coal refinery. There's another famous movie. That they filmed in that refinery. Do you, do you know what it is? She's a maniac. Maniac. No, no, no. no. flash dance. Is that what you're saying? No, you know, like when they go inside like, where the hive is, you know, there's all the pipes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mezzines and stuff. There's another movie that came out, I think, two, a couple, not three years later, four years later. Terminator 2? Nope. Hold yeah. On. yeah okay. You would think, though, right? Mm. So, mm. um, the first Batman movie, when they go oh, in, it's yeah. the same place. They actually said when they went to go film Batman, there was pieces of the hive still still in there mm -hmm. from all those years before they had. But yeah, that's where they filmed it. Which, yeah, they say when the Batman crew when, first entered the set, they found most of the alien nest still intact. That's awesome. I like so, how you're fact checking me. I like it. <laughs> no, actually, yeah, well, actually, I can't believe I didn't know that because I had that teed up, but I have so many facts over here teed up that I'm like, uh. Well, that's what I said. Which is it a certain Batman scene, or you're just saying you know when the Joker gets knocked into the acid? Yeah, yeah, by Batman. Yeah. That was that whole place, that whole plant. Oh, shit. yeah, it was a deactivated uh coal mine or some coal, coal factory or something. I forget, but mm -hmm. oh, that knife scene. I gotta pull that knife scene up with the yeah. hand. 
Who didn't do that in the military? Too? <laughs> hey guys, let's I, play with a knife. I did it when I was like 10 years old, dude, with my butterfly <laughs> knife. <laughs> the butter. Oh, whoa, where's my butter? Oh, I don't have it on a desk. I usually have a butterfly knife here because anytime you bring up the 80s, you have to have a battle song butterfly knife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had butterfly knife, brass knuckles, all that, man. Right in the uh, Dutch Master cigar box. Oh, you had to pull it out and do the alien scene, man, until you stabbed yourself in the hand and you stopped. <sighs> Okay, I'll pull this up. Here it goes. Knife scene. Let's pull this sucker up. We're going to share this screen, but for 15 seconds, everybody. So, and I'm going to try not to mute myself like I always do. <laughs> what do you do, man? Oh, <laughs> shit. Come on, Bishop. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> You. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Trust me. Trust me. Fucking <laughs> 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 Bill Paxton, man. He's like, here you go. Hey, I got a, I got a, I got an idea. Don't they have a very specific type of camouflage? Like you just saw Drake's pants, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's um, Ooh. it was made for the movie. I forget what it's, it's um, I forget what the hell it's called. It's based on the World War II, um, mm -hmm. or frog camo, but it was made specifically yeah. for the movie and stuff. I made a version of it. I like okay, sort of like screen grabs, and then um, I have a a friend on Instagram. He uh, taco mark holsters he makes holsters in it called the the bug camouflage so you can get like custom made <laughs> holsters in it okay awesome. i was gonna say that would be a good <laughs> idea i should have assumed you already you're already way ahead of me Love i it. would want that like in a windbreaker you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, a, like a hardcore yeah, it's windbreaker a good, it's a good idea you know it is. maybe down the road you know mm -hmm. oh i didn't even look for the sergeant sped up in the back but What's check this out. A switchblade comb from the 1980s. No. Who didn't have a switchblade <laughs> comb, man? Yeah. You remove the comb and then you slide razor blades in there and just pinch the uh oh, Jesus frame. Christ, this guy. Oh, oh, your eyes, eyes, dude. It's like, why can't you just have a comb? You Did ready, you ever man. see these locks? These <laughs> locks were beautiful in the 80s, man. Come on. Because when you're 10 years old, you need to convert your, your comb to uh, Shit, an actual weapon. I used to take sheet metal and make swords like Conan. We need to do a Conan Yo, show, man. Oh, that's my another. God. You know who co wrote Conan, right? Speaking mm -hmm. of old movies we're talking about, who? Oliver Stone, man. No what? shit. Yeah, man. The original one. Co wrote uh, the original Conan? Yeah, he, he co wrote it. The original Conan. That's why that mm -hmm. movie's fucking badass. <laughs> <laughs> Another, yeah. another, another another one like that too. You know who co-wrote Rambo 2? Oh first uh -uh. blood two Rambo mm -hmm. part two, whatever. Mm -hmm. James Cameron. Oh hey, no shit. Fact, yeah. Does he get like credit in it or is it yeah, like a ghostwriter? I'm gonna check now. I'm gonna fact check myself. Yeah. Fact check. Right, fact check. Well, you know, like like sometimes people say like a like a like a ghostwriter, maybe. I don't know what they call it in the movies, but if there's someone like that that co-writes or does whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm fascinated with Oliver Stone now. I was when I was a kid, but it's like just the shit that dude's been through. And I'm like listening to his whole story. Yeah, how, how do you feel about him though? Like, I'm not like a like he's got full credit. Like, he can say whatever he wants, but I'm, I was never really a big fan of him. And some of his some of his movies are awesome, and some mm -hmm. some are like, eh. but um, but he I, was, I, he was in the yeah, nom. but you know what? If you listen, if you like, I didn't. I was never. I was always like, oh, he's a peace neck. He's this. He's that. Um, JFK and all that. Yeah. But listening to his book and realizing, like, when he came back from the war, and like the things that he went through after that, it reminds me so much of so many guests I've had. Yeah. And now it's like, and I can almost see it, like why he did what he did and why he believes what he does. No, hundred percent. And and even Platoon, you could see it all there. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I see that movie, I just I look right through it, and I could see the real the real stuff that he saw. Yeah. And that's the thing is, like, I don't know. Let's do a question on the hall. Okay, audience, what do you all think of Oliver Stone <laughs> as a person, not a director? Because he's incredible as a director. Yeah, so he one time was on a reality show with Tony Danza, where really? Tony Danza was a school teacher. Oh, yeah, this is years that. ago. Yeah, in yeah. Philly, right? Yeah, and yeah. he brought in Oliver Stone to teach a history lesson, and the kids kind of fell asleep only because they weren't used to, like, lecturing. But Oliver Stone went in there, like, you know, just dropped a bunch of history on them. 
But I remember thinking like, I, I would want to hear that dude talk about history, whether, you know, yeah. I, I don't want to get into politics with him, but I would want to hear his. Yeah. Oh yeah. Quite I'm sure he's where, you know, well-read on history. Yeah. Cause his dad was a world war II veteran, very corporate, very corporate. Mm-hmm. Wanted him to go to corporate. His mom was French. He was a huge, huge, huge fan of, uh, Jim Morrison. He wanted Jim Morrison to play the part of uh, Charlie Sheen did. Oh, but yeah. yeah, man, there's all sorts of shit. Yeah, he did. What, what, he, what movie? When did he direct? He directed The Doors, right? The movie? Without yeah, he did Homer? The Doors. Yeah, what year did that come out? Oh, um, that was like 90 something, maybe? Yeah. Early 90s, mm-hmm. maybe? I've never seen it, so I don't know. But... You know, he is a war hero. You know how he became a war hero? He was so used to being, and this is Oliver Stone, when he was in, and I just, I'm listening to his book now. I have a different respect for him now that I listen to the book. Yeah. Cause I've, you know, me, I've been in the government for fucking 20 something years now. And I know kind of the backstory of it, but when he was in Vietnam, um, there's a scene in platoon where um, Chris tosses a grenade and it goes into the, into a, a hole where a, a, um, a VC is at and it blows up and kills him and it stops this, um, it stops this ambush. And it's in real life, Oliver Stone, they were getting ambushed. And Oliver Stone was in four different units. He wasn't, he was in, and his last unit, I think, was a LERP unit. And they were getting ambushed. And this is the first time he actually killed someone up close. I mean, all the times he's been shooting and fighting and everything, but it's like, you know, you don't close with the enemy. I mean, but this is like really the enemy is right over there. He tosses a grenade up and lands in the hole and kills a guy. And he says he goes up in there. He's just shredded. So his, his um, NCO at the time gave him a Bronze Star of Valor for that. Mm. So it wasn't like one of these piss off like army officers getting <laughs> showing up. But he was he enlisted in uh, like in real life or was he an officer? Yeah, he was. Um, he was enlisted. He failed out of college initially. Um, a lot like me, um, <laughs> failed out of college initially. But he didn't become a doctor and star in Clown Motel too. Yeah, but um, I, I'm still in awe. <laughs> yeah. But no, he did enlist. He um, and he went infantry in Vietnam, and he really yeah, he did was, write letters home to his mom. He, he was in. Um, was he in first ACR? I forget. He's, he was twenty uh, fifth, well, yeah. but he was in like four different units. Yeah, it always comes back to platoon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, when you, it, and how did that conversation start? Because we we referenced well, it yeah. back. It won, you know, because it's so, well, such an <laughs> accurate movie, man. Yeah, I tell you what, though, I, I you know now that we have Matt on the show, I I. I want to talk about art, man, because like I have your <laughs> yeah. shit. Like every time I look around this damn yeah. office, I got like Matt. Where does Matt Rendar come from? We talked about this in the podcast, but I want people to know like you can't find Matt Klein on IJE. Yeah. No, you can't. No. <laughs> you were drinking with your friends when your buddy's like Matt Rendar. Matt Rendar. That's funny. I didn't know what it was. I thought that was your come government. On, where does name. it come from, Matt? Oh, um. <laughs> The round, so okay. So if you're like a really hardcore Star Wars nerd fan, you, you know all that can all that stuff that's destroyed now by one yeah. Disney, all the was it Legends whatever. There was um, what do you call it? I'm trying to think of make this nice short. In 1996, Lucasfilm wanted to see if people were still into Star Wars and if it was profitable. So they made this whole giant uh, media blitz thing where they came out with a novel, a comic book, action figures, and a video game and a soundtrack called shadows of the empire and one of the mm-hmm. characters in it, it was a bounty hunter that was a uh, mercenary that was friends of han solo his name was dash rendar so, mm. so the, the video game shadows of the empire came out so the way i got the nickname which stayed with me forever was mm. i got the game the video game was like on nintendo 64 the save file was dash rendar so i went matt rendar flash forward to the when the prequels came out in 1999 we were gonna go we cut school to go see the movie Mm-hmm. And my friend booted the game up, and he was like, "What the fuck is Matt Rendar?" <laughs> Every time they get fun of me, they're like, "Who will save the world from the Galactic Empire?" Matt Rendar. <laughs> everybody started calling me Rendar, 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 and then they started expanding out to other friends, and mm-hmm. everybody knew me as Rendar. Mm-hmm. I had a guy, actually, one of my buddies, actually buy a plane ticket for me, and it said Matthew Rendar. I'm like, bro. That's not my real fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I thought that was your government oh, name, man. Yeah. When I first invited you on the podcast, I'm like, I'm like, hey, Matt Rendar, would you like to come on the show? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's fun. I was at um, I went to Shot Show in January, and I was at the Cry Party, which mm-hmm. was insane. And I'd hear it over in the distance, Rendar. 
I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, the good thing no, is if you, bro. yeah, if you commit a crime there, they're gonna put the warrants in mm-hmm. Memory mm-hmm. Star's name. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, it's so there's gonna be a sketch artist with like, uh, and shit. like, <laughs> it's like this guy's lying. I can't find a Matt Rendar anywhere. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, Matt Rendar guy, guy, man. Cool. <laughs> I Did you like his Shot alias? Show? Did you like Shot Show though? Did you have a good time out there? Yeah, my first time going. Great time. Great yeah. time. Met a lot of cool people, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I had there was a couple people I didn't get to meet, unfortunately, but but everybody I did, it was it was awesome. I'm gonna definitely go next year. Go for the full thing. I only went there for like three days. Yeah, but, um, you know, yeah. It's, it's like a, it's almost like a spring break for adults. You oh, know what I mean? Like everybody just gets together, yeah. hangs out. Uh, I was supposed to go this year and couldn't go. I went, oh. uh, I went oh, right before got the COVID. COVID. You know what? I'm so glad I actually didn't meet you. I probably would have given you COVID. <laughs> I had because we were supposed right to link before. up like three times. I was like, hey, bro, I'm coming up, and I'm like, ah, shit, I'm like getting caught up and all that. Yeah, I had yeah. COVID the, the beginning of the year. I was like, I was glad to get it, just get out of the way. <laughs> Yeah, when yeah. I went, I went in January of 2020, and it was we were out there in Vegas when all the news was reporting about COVID, but they didn't know what to call it at the time. Yeah. And one of the dudes we were sitting there at a bar with was like, "Man, he, could, he had the chills, and he's like, <laughs> I'm freezing, you know." And everybody was joking, going, "Oh, you got that, you got that shit from China or whatever." And then all of a sudden, like, flash forward three months later, and we're in like lockdowns or whatever. Yeah, but man. We were all flashing back, like, "Man, we think you had you had COVID, and yeah, we probably yeah. all got it too." But uh, I, I did enjoy it. It was it was a cool. Uh, it's it gets a little. I don't know how it was this year, but like in that when that year when I went, it was so crowded. It was yeah. Well, From whatever, what everybody said, it wasn't it wasn't as crowded as it was. So yeah. it was, I mean, I got to move around pretty quick. Yeah, it was good. I went with um, I did a collab, uh, charity collab with um, Cry Precision. So mm-hmm. I did their charity T-shirt, and they had like a big raffle and stuff. So I had um, what do you call it? Uh, Christian Craig had action figure. So yeah. he met up with me. He signed it. You know, they put it up for the auction to raise some money. Yo, he's awesome. If yeah, you got we need to do a podcast with him. Yeah, he, he was just on um. Black Rifle Coffee just did one with him. Mm. There's only one it. good podcast out there. What's the up? Protectors podcast. I know. Which is, <laughs> while he's, while he's recording together. this podcast. <laughs> and oh, the, the other protagonist one. Protagonist no, is like, he's, he's like, he just did that one, but he's going he's gonna to do more. He's like, yeah. I was talking to him the other day, and he's like, I love doing podcasts. So he's going to come on. You can, you can co-host with BC. We'll do like a round we'll table. We'll so up. I was going to say this, like it's probably, it probably felt strange for him to be thrust into the spotlight. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, because he probably yeah. was used to not being, but I think a lot of people were motivated by his. Well, action. if he was part of the Navy SEALs, he already would have known <laughs> that the spotlight would have been out there. So. <laughs> right. But okay, you're, I, yeah. Yeah. I love SEALs, man, but whatever. <laughs> they have good hair, man. They have great hair. Good hair. Hot wives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hold on. Yes, it was a great Black Rifle Coffee Company interview. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, oh, I, it's, the only one, it's the only one he did. He just did one. So, yeah, you got you to check it out. He's got to be on a Protectors podcast. Yeah, next. Not, he's gonna or we can talk about like some SAS. We can talk about Bravo. What was it? Bravo. Bravo 2-0. Bravo yeah. 2-0 with Sean Bean. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, you I've got a Star Wars question. Bean. Oh, <laughs> Star Wars. What okay, I hate, I hate to interrupt, but this came up recently. The actor that played Count Dooku. Uh, um, oh, you know who I'm talking about, though, yes, right? Yes, yes. He played vampires. In the what 70s. did he do in World War II? Was, he was SAS? He was SAS. He was SAS? Okay. I thought that he was with SOE, and... There was some discussions recently or some mm-hmm. meme or something, and I was like, ah, oh, that doesn't sound right. Okay, so he was SAS. Yeah, yeah. he was supposed yeah. he was a big throat slitter. Okay, so that? no, I'm did you serious. see that yeah. clip the other day? Yeah, like was, stabbing so he in the was back. A, yeah, he was on um he was on a set of uh, mm-hmm. Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. and he said when like they were trying to yeah. get him to like say something, like yeah. when someone gets stabbed in the back, you go, ah, oh! and he goes, oh. yeah. No, when you stab someone in the back, oh, their <laughs> head they go and they gurgle. <laughs> yeah, oh shit, dude. That's what the discussion was. Like that's how it started. Mm-hmm. And I remember yeah. seeing him in an interview where God, a reporter, a reporter leans. Um, <laughs> I gotta find it now. Man. Yeah, supposedly you stab somebody in the kidney, it's so painful they can't scream. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what I was saying was, so this reporter asked him, hey, there's a rumor that you were like a spy in, in the war or whatever. 
And he says, can you keep a secret? And the reporter's like, yeah. And he goes, so can I. And just completely changes the subject. Which I think that was like the, that was like the first time that kind of came it's into the mainstream where people are like, oh, what's this backstory of this guy, you know, being a being a badass in the military? Christopher stuff. Lee. How did I not know Christopher Lee? Lee. Yeah, he just uh, he passed away last year, right? Yeah. I uh, know. 2015 already? Holy shit. Really? That's when he passed away? Yeah, we're getting old, brother. Damn. So, but he wasn't an alien, so I guess. No, yeah. yeah. Get back well, to you know, what's the thing about the? <laughs> can't say shitty, no more Hey, real anymore. quickly. So, do y'all know what some? I'm sure you do. I don't even know why I'm asking the question this way. How they uh, came up with the firearms and stuff and aliens? That's an easy question, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Actually, I, 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 I actually just to, to nerd out right here. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! Right whoa Where did you get whoa, that, dude? Whoa! So, holy oh, shit. that thing is oh. awesome. So being like a being a huge nerd, you know, yeah, you know, a huge nerd, like I collect um, what do you call it, prop replicas? So I have a bunch okay. of alien shit. I have mm -hmm. I have a smart gun. I have a pistol with the the VP7 was their pistol. Mm -hmm. But they're all they're all real guns and stuff like the um, what do you call it? The the pulse rifle is a uh, Thompson. Yeah, it's an under slung um. The most cool shotgun known to mankind, the Spaz 12. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is it the Spaz and, 12 um, or is it the Spaz 12? The, the smart gun was MG42. Yeah. With motorcycle parts on it and stuff. Yeah. And the, the Ithaca shotgun is the shotgun that um, Hicks uses for close encounters. That was cool. Nice. <laughs> I've said that line a bunch of times. But um, yeah, yeah, which is bullshit. Yeah. And, and the only reason I said is like, as a kid, that was what was so cool about those mm -hmm. weapons were. Right. You could kind of see the parts like that in there or like the machine gunners and stuff. It was just, yeah, yeah you had to, I don't know. They picked, they picked weapons that had really cool flashes because they it's all blank firing and stuff. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it's not CGI and everything. That's another thing too about that movie. Everything's like happening on set. You know, there's no CGI aliens running around and stuff. Yeah, uh, that's what I love it's about it. It's all fucking smoke and bullets and shit. And was this, did Stan Winston do this or no? Yeah, Stan Winston that? did the aliens, yeah. Same dude that did what Predator and Werewolf Terminator, in Predator, Jurassic Park. Like, did he do American Werewolf in London too? No, that know? was um, what's his name? Oh, that was Rick Baker. Clark, right? Rick, Rick Baker, yeah. I'm just Basically, showing those were like now. the two big, like, uh, <laughs> special effects houses, like Stan yeah. Winston and then Rick yeah. Baker. Yep. Um, I like that trivia where they said, like, the Brit crew did not like James Cameron. They're like, who was this bloke? He's well, no Ridley Scott. Uh, yeah, that's the they're all well, they're all big union. Yeah. And so, like, mm -hmm. when they take tea, they take everything shuts down, and like Cameron was not into that. So <laughs> <laughs> it was he's, a like, lot. he's like, "We got to yeah. do eighteen-hour days," and they're like, "No." Nah. They're like, "No, yeah, yeah, no." That's exactly what happened. Also, too, like Alien is a masterpiece movie, you know, and mm -hmm. like now they have this you know, young start, you know, uh, American coming over to make a sequel to it. So yeah, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I keep forgetting that that there was a movie before Aliens. Like I forget. Alien yeah, I keep like forgetting Alien. Person. Yeah, Alien. <laughs> I mean, now, I saw that one when I was like six years old, but I mean, it just didn't have the effect on me that, you know, you know prepping yeah. for the show, I went and I, I watched some of the clips from YouTube and stuff about the newer ones I made and how this whole alien centric thing came across. And it's like kind of interesting to see it, but it's different because I don't really want to know. Yeah. Like I want it just to be like, Hey, you know what? They dropped on a fucking alien planet. They're fighting these motherfuckers are trying to live. I don't really need a history lesson. Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's pro my opinion. It's a problem with modern movies. Everybody's like obsessed, like with doing prequels and like yeah. figuring out, you know, like what happened. Like, do we need to know that? I think it's better just keeping it a mystery and letting you fill in the blanks in your head. And, you know, because that's what you talk about. Like as a kid, that's what we talked about. Yeah, all that stuff, like where they came from, you know. And then you start getting into aliens versus predator and stuff when those mm -hmm. comics came out and people were like basically wanting to fight over it, like who would win. I mean. Yeah, if you, yeah, you know, if you explain everything, then it's like, well, who, then you don't get to talk, you don't get to make. Yeah, sure. and, and also too, the backstory, like whatever you do, it's never going to be as cool as what you had in your mind. You know? Right. Just, yeah. But that's a mod. It's a modern movie thing, you know. It's just, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I don't even know that I saw any of the other ones. What did they make? Three and four or something? Aliens? Yeah, they made three, three and four. four. Yeah, they were kind of, they were kind of lost in a shuffle. They weren't really, they didn't make any sense. They weren't really there. Yeah, I mean, Alien vs. Predator is different because it's just like, hey, you know what? Fuck it, let's just fight. Yeah, okay. well, 
it started off as a dark like aliens with predator was like a dark horse comic yeah was, I remember really those cool. like my favorite comics like the first run mm -hmm. and then you know it just when they came to making the movie it just went all over the place and stuff but you know yeah you so think? since you brought that up i when i was a kid i bought 10 copies when that first, that first oh, one, yeah. uh, no, those, I was the like, ones are awesome, dude. The original, I dealt the original yeah. comic is awesome. Yeah, I dealt comics like adults do stocks back then. Mm -hmm. Like I read them obviously, <laughs> yeah. and, and drew and stuff like that. But when those were hitting, everybody was like, "Oh, that's going to be the hot one," you know, like mm -hmm. the original Predator yeah. four four issue series and stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I want to say that Dark Horse Presents did, yeah, they like did the, the Space Marines, one. right? The yeah, they did. the Heartbreakers or what was it? The they did. Um, well, Dark Horse Presents did the very first Aliens yeah. Predator comic. That was like all well, this verse and shit. That yeah. was from Aliens and Predator. It was Fox owned both rights and you know, they threw them in together. And it did so well. They did the first series, which was the, the whole story was pretty much the Predators would um, send drones out that would lay eggs on and infect the planet so they can go hunting. <laughs> And one of them, yeah. one of them was a, like a colony that had um, that was shipping what was it like like cow like animals to plants so people can eat and stuff. Yeah, and they all yeah. got infected and there was aliens running around everywhere. And yeah, it's just a yeah. mess. But um, then they did they did a Colonial Marine one with with aliens and Predator. They, they did a bunch of different series and stuff. Yeah, but I, I thought that um, Dark Horse Presents had a running series. You know, has had like Sin City was when it first started. Frank yeah, Miller, I mean, Sin City first started on there. But then I thought they also had one that was called like the hearts, like the heartbreakers or something, but it was a Marine unit, like from aliens, not Hicks and them, but like, no, they're, they're, um, like a different unit. You know what it, I'm saying? It, that might've been the name of the, I'm trying to remember. I don't even remember the name of the unit, but the name of the, the comic was called aliens, colonial Marines. Huh. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. It didn't have predators in it. It was just aliens. Yeah. But I think it was like maybe like 15, like a run of 15 comics. So. Yeah. I remember the first, some of the first mini series that they had like the four issues yeah. From Dark Horse, like once they went aliens, I like this. I think mean, I had like the four issue of the second one that was like airbrushed and stuff. That was, yeah. that was pretty badass. Yeah, they did. Um, because like you know, Aliens 3 didn't come out, which changed everything, but it came didn't come out till like 91. So mm -hmm. Dark Horse filled in the blanks. They made a whole sequel with Newt, Newt's older and mm -hmm. Hickman survived and Ripley. And did did you get her signature? She's oh. like on the circuit too. Newt. Oh, uh, Newt? Yeah. No, she wasn't there. But yeah, she is. She's a she's a school teacher. The only, yeah, I think it's pretty cool, man. I was like, yeah, I was really. looking at her potential guests and stuff, and I'm like, huh. Yeah. But, so uh, did she do anything else after Aliens, or did she? No, just, she, she grew up and became. She a grew up. As far as, See, that's pretty cool, though, man. Yeah, yeah that's no. honorable to be a school teacher, man. Yeah, Plus, like, I mean, people would be like, "Oh, you're part of one of the greatest movies ever." Oh, she's and she awesome. was good too. Yeah, I mean, she was good. Like, you know, awesome. Like, like, literally, Ellen's like, "Oh, these guys are Marines. You're safe." And she's like, "No, can I go <laughs> home?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're like, "No, they yeah, come out at night. night. Yeah. Mostly, mostly they come at <laughs> night." Yeah, yeah. So you know, you know what's really cool thing? Cool thing mm. I want to bring up about aliens, which I love compared to modern movies now, is like you never see the aliens. You just see them. No, like, they're like. I refer they're, like, they're kind of like cats like you only see them if they want you to see them and they're just mm -hmm. always in the dark like jumping or like never really see them and you know you go and watch that movie in the 80s and then you come out of the theater like you think you've seen them a lot more than you actually do but they're yeah. like they're hardly in the movie you know yeah and that's the cool thing about it. it's like because your yeah. brain your your imagination mm -hmm. is like is imagining them to be probably a lot scarier than they yeah, actually like are. just in the darkness and stuff but like now everything's like you know full cult where you know like know. And now you see the aliens in the movies it's like broad daylight not scary yeah. you know well you know and and not to change topics but m night Shyamalan's movie um signs same yes. thing about the aliens i heard people in blockbuster when it first came out and that's what they were arguing about oh this movie sucks because you don't even get to see the alien until the very end and i'm like yeah you guys are losers, man. Yeah. Like, that was a great movie for that whole reason because you never see this alien. But anyway, that's you know what freaks me out more about the aliens is the acid. The <laughs> acid that comes out of them. You're like, fuck, dude, yeah. that's gonna burn through my balls or something. I don't yeah. know. Like if it bleeds, we can kill it. But then you're yeah, like, I don't want to bleed. You're like, like well, it's I don't want to make it bleed. <laughs> yeah, that you know, was the it's... that was the argument when the first comics came out, Aliens versus Predator, you know. Oh, all the yeah. nerds were all sitting around like, oh, mm -hmm. if you're shooting kill an alien, the blood will kill the predator. Well, actually, in the first movie, that was like the big deal. Like they had the face hugger and like they wanted to cut it off mm -hmm. and uh, John Hurt. And when they cut it, 
the air started leaking. It was going to go right oh, through the hole. Shit. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it sucked out in the space because this thing bled a little bit. Yeah. But, um, but that's yeah. all I remember is that the alien busting out of uh cousin's chest, you know, that's all I remember from the first one. I was so yeah. young. It's a good scene too, man. Like watching that. <laughs> but like back, but when that movie came out, like nobody saw shit like that. So that was like Hell no. crazy, man. Yeah, it's probably like Exorcist was the only other movie that was as severe, maybe yeah. as that scene. You know another, another good scene in the original alien that was freaked me out as a kid was when when they knock Kane, um not Kane, um Ash's head off. He's an android. You find out he's an android, and she's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am. Uh, I'm. I'm reading the comments over here, and I am a pretty convincing nerd. Like you are, like, man. Like I can nerd it up, man. That's it. Gotta wave yeah. the flag. <laughs> and, put, and I'll push my glasses up when I do it too. I don't <laughs> care, man. Uh, I can't see anything. I'll dro- I'll drop some some comic book nerd uh, references in a heartbeat, man. I st- I need to sell those. Like, are those things worth anything? I need to make some money, man. No, because I uh, I have a hell of a well. No, <laughs> gave me the a cringe real... face, like hell no, nah, dude. Oh, dude, you I don't even want to talk about money. it. I um, I have five thousand comics from when I was a kid. So like, that's like 80s, five dollars, ten dollars. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm going through them. Like I have every first, like you know, all all sorts of like crazy shit. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you have and I'm going through... uh, Walking Dead. Uh, oh, no, I just snap. have the uh, graphic novel Walking Dead, but yeah. I'm talking about like the 80s and stuff. The 80s and shit. It's hard, man. Anything yeah. you collect, you should love to collect it. Yeah, yeah. I just it make it like it's so hard to be like the. I have so much. Like, I have boxes of uh, what are they? The the twelve or sixteen inch GI Joes, like the really cool ones. Mm-hmm. I love them, but oh. they're still in packages because I'm I'm waiting to have like a really cool office. Not that this one isn't cool, but I don't have enough room to put. You know what? Fuck it. I'm putting a GI Joes up here. But That's like just... comic books, I'm doing. I'm going through the prices and stuff. I found some three hundred dollar ones and some ones but ones that i thought were really expensive yeah if i got like three bucks no yeah. so like like i said like uh stocks man i want to i want to i want to sell these <laughs> things man mm-hmm. make some of that that them, them cheddar you know what i'm saying like i've got I, all the I, first i the have first every time. i have issues like one through 50 of the original gi joe comics too oh, cool, do man. you the have snake eyes editions all those awesome do, ones do you have the first punisher miniseries yeah i do i have uh three copies of the first punisher Wow. Now I'm like looking around. I'm like, uh, nobody knows my address, but yeah, I do have, I have all the punishers. I've, I mean, I, my first tattoo, my actually my third or fourth tattoo was a punisher tattoo. Yeah. I have so much punisher shit everywhere. Is it worth money now is what I'm saying. Cause some of them are worth the miniseries (laughs) isn't worth shit. It's worth maybe like 200 bucks. The whole series. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I have a Thomas man. I have a Thomas Jane signed punisher movie one too uh-huh. i think i'm the only one in america that liked that movie yeah, Don't hate okay. the, the first one or what or no 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 nah, first one's Dolph Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> we should i can't even like i of course it made like australia or some shit i don't even know yeah, yeah I, I think it was you know i didn't mind uh the other one the thomas, thomas jane. jane one did you see the just, fan film with thomas jane as the punisher yeah i like that better. yeah that, that was awesome, awesome man. Not bad, man i like that better only i just wish that they would stick to the script like Marvel wrote that script. I mean, you know, like yeah, the comics yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah. But the um the, the miniseries was pretty good. Yeah. Oh, the, well, with um with uh, the from John Bernthal. Yeah, yeah, John mm-hmm. Berthal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a good actor. I liked it. It was, it was all right. It was all right. Yeah. How about those dark horse? What can I get on those dark horse, man? Muted. Yeah. He's telling me that two hundred dollars isn't a whole lot. Of money. Oh, I was saying seventeen dollars. <laughs> I, I was on mute again. I was saying for those dark horse ones, like seventeen dollars. Yeah. And that's because I'll be the only one bidding on them. So I'll okay. give you 17, but that's it. Anything ever than that, <laughs> yeah. that's fucking, you're done. Damn, man. I was hoping like these things would be worth some, some now. Nah, there's man. like a bunch of apps. Cause I'm over here scanning barcodes. <laughs> there's yeah. one. Um, is it X factor or one of the ones where like the, X-Force? the young X-Men X force. Yeah. Or one of them that's worth like 14 grand i'm like i think i have hold up cuz which one because i got uh, <laughs> i don't I got, know because i, I got like, all the first like it's, i got all that i, like, I have it. got to find it i've got to find it because i'm like we only went through like three of my boxes and we're like yeah my son got bored i was like really it's funny like um I got rid of a bunch of comics like uh, a couple months ago. So I went to my little place and the guy's like, you know, I'm like, how much? And the guy, he gave me like, he's like, uh, 50 bucks. I'm like, no problem. Boom. A lot of new comics I was reading. Yeah. So I was like, you know, do you get a lot of people that think that they have gold? Yeah. And they're drunk. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. So he's got a guy that comes in and, you know, 
He's got like a <laughs> little Corvette. And he's like, he's got the big box and he puts it down. And the guy's like, all right. He's like, how much yeah. money? He's like, oh, I don't know, like twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. This is this is number one of Superman. You know, <laughs> right. the action comics. He's like, um, it's the seventy fifth reprint from like, <laughs> yeah. ten, bro. Yeah. I uh, I try like, to tell people wig like, out. <laughs> yeah, you don't have like collecting is different yeah. now because like yeah. I mean people don't understand you don't have shit. Like, it's number it's one, a, though. Yeah, it's that's what I'm saying. Of, of 72 million. Hold on. So let's back up real quick. You said there was one that was worth 14 grand for X Force. Is it Deadpool? <laughs> like when they first? No, <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you. Go into your bed, Sanders, and pull it out, <laughs> dude. I'll yeah, take I, a thousand. I'll take 1475. I'll give you 600 dollars for it. I'll yeah. take a dollar 398. Man, I don't one? care. Uh, someone said, "Oh, OF Brewer, is this the Big Bang Show?" Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Look, what happens when you get to be like. Holy shit. Well, how many days do I have left? 290 till I'm 50. Yeah. I am the biggest nerd you can imagine. So but, this is but this not is as what big I will... as Matt or PC. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're, you're <laughs> not a pulse rifle? Dude, I'm the I'm the um, biggest, right? I do actually some of these guns are uh, 298 days, but I do want to um I do want to take some of these guns and like get them like Cerakoted out and make like a, a Boba Fett gun. I mean yeah. Now I let me this, tell you this. I Go have ahead. a badass Boba Fett tattoo because it's not really yeah. badass. Yeah. But I'm like, um, I was like, man, maybe I should get that taken out. But then I watched the new Boba Fett and I was like, oh, this is fucking good shit, man. Yeah. So I'm, when I yes, was I am a- counting. I did that in Iraq as well. You're counting down my days. <laughs> uh, thanks to GW, I got to spend a good 18 months recalled. So thanks, you got to add in a wake up. You didn't add in a wake up. You got to be oh, like, well, there is no wake up. I'll take the leave. I'll just want him to show up. It's the kind of so how many how many days did um Hudson have until he was done? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, that's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> he says it. He said, yeah. I think you know what it is. I don't know. I got it. I got no, it. I, I don't know. He says it, it's on his helmet too. He actually has it written on his helmet, a calendar, and he's like, the X of the days off. <laughs> yeah. Um, before we get all crazy, because we're gonna probably prop off here in a minute, I do want to pull mm-hmm. something up. I don't want to get. Matt and BC's and everybody else out there's thoughts on this as well. Because mm-hmm. I'm very excited about this. Because is it, it turned into one, like after watching some cartoons, mm-hmm. it's turned to be in one of my uh, oh yeah, yeah, my favorite characters. Stay hidden. Mm-hmm. <gasps> when you saw this a couple weeks ago or last week. What do you think? The key oh, I... to hunt the Jedi. Yep, hunt the Jedi, bro. This patience. This patience. Jedi yeah. cannot help what they are. Can't help what you are, bro. Just like Matt Klein can't help what he is. So what do you <laughs> think about it, man? I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. That uh, dual fates is in my head ever since, but um, what do you call it? Uh, the, only, the only, I mean, people are going a little bit nutty on the internet about the the Inquisitor, you know, yeah. the one guy they showed mm-hmm. and stuff. But but I'm down, man. They're yeah. bringing all these cool characters back. You know, it's great seeing you, McGregor. Matt. Yes, I love you, McGregor. Is just a great. So character. let me ask you this then: What is it? This is Obi Wan, like pre the crybaby Luke Skywalker. Oh, this is right after. Uh... It's Revenge of the Sith. All the Jedi's are yeah. hi- going into hiding. Oh, now the Empire okay. is hunting. Remember the twins? Down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so it is. It's like I just said. So it's before Luke Skywalker. Like yeah, his own. Kid. Yeah, he's watching over him at a yeah. distance. Yeah. But um, what in it? Some of the characters in the trailer are uh, Star Wars Rebels characters. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Dave Filoni wrote Star Wars Rebels. So the mm-hmm. bad guys are all Inquisitors. They're they're not like Sith. They're like mm-hmm. fourth sen- slightly fourth sensitive, but the Empire is sending them all over the place to go hunt down and kill Jedi and stuff. So Ooh. I they- tell you what, Clone Wars turned out to be a really good cartoon, man. Uh, what Clone Wars? Yeah, 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 yeah. I liked it. The last scene with Ahsoka. Yeah. Oh, the, god. On the you're talking about on the planet, and Darth Vader goes. And yeah, and the, with Darth Vader, like, oh yeah. my god. And this is for the geeks. Out there. He's gonna be in it too, Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. Adrian Christian's gonna be Vader in it. Yeah, that's gonna be fucking. Um, you know, he, a- and he gets a lot of hate, but, you know. <laughs> oh, he has the worst line in Star Wars history. What it's, is uh, it? What, Attack of the Clones. He says, what he, say, he says to Natalie Portman, he's like, your skin is soft like the sands of Tatooine. I was in the movie. <laughs> 
like this, like, oh my god. <laughs> is, that the, is that the one they made the meme out of? Oh, probably. Uh, oh, I got that meme with him. When she's looking over and her shoulder. Did, like, did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How does anyone say, like, like, so oh. let me ask you this. I, I'm being a, I'm kind of being a critic here. Isn't <laughs> Star Wars known for its kind of bad dialogue though? Like, or no? yes, but that is really, really, really bad. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's oh, horrible. Yeah. So, which one is the best Star Wars movie, real quick, in your opinion, out of all of them, all this stuff made? Can you pick one or no? Oh. I'm not. not it's Empire. Tough, isn't it? <laughs> Empire. I like Return of yeah. the Jedi. I, I mean, if you that. kill the Ewoks off, oh, fuck the Ewoks, man. Yeah, bitch. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would say, uh, re, uh, do, we, do we, your we, order. Do your order. Go in order, then. Uh, I go one, three, two. I'm not even Hold talking on. about the other ones. I don't give a fuck about them. Yeah. Hold on. What is one? I, I, I only had. There's only uh, new, new hope. New hope. I thought That's that like, was episode five, four. What yeah. are we talking about? Come yeah, on, yeah, you're right. Don't, don't try to get all technical. <laughs> I don't. No, this is what people call me out, and they're like, "No, Empire that is before. still good, I'm like, though. "Look, fool, right. Empire Strikes Back is the best." Yeah. And Empire. then to me, that um, man, shit, I just I like, lost uh, one of the newer ones that came. Rogue One. Rogue One, yeah, Rogue One's cool. Rogue oh One God, was really dude. good. Rogue One's awesome. Yeah. Like I, I have to say. I can sit down and just watch that over and over and be like, oh, damn, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, you it's know, so good. Like just, and that final scene, hold on. Well, I do. I, I mentioned Clone Wars before, but this is like mm -hmm. the if you haven't watched Clone Wars, you really do need to watch these. I was like a cartoon. <laughs> I'm an old man, but I love cartoons. I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. But um, this last scene here, man, with, with, this is um, picking that's up a cartoon. Scene. This is cartoon. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. Come a long way, man. <laughs> uh huh. You have to watch the whole thing, but you see mm -hmm. it, and you're just like, you can see a semblance of Anakin because throughout the whole Clone Wars, you know, you have Anakin, who's like really a good dude, mm -hmm. and Obi Wan, and then he just he gets to be like just a jackass that he is, and you're like, damn, maybe there is a semblance of a humanity in there. Because mm -hmm. in that whole thing is like, you know, you have Ahsoka, you have, oh man, it's just really good. So and does he kill the Ewoks? He, he <laughs> killed every Ewok ever. Yeah, I'm going to have to check yeah. that out, dude. Can and he take out Jar Jar Binks while we're at it? Or no? Oh my God. Oh, I don't that? even what? fucking bring up that asshole. I don't even, you know what? We should have ended the show. That was, another, that was another one too. I was like, yeah. That was, yeah. I remember, I remember my You got to comb experience. the desert. What's that now? Jar Binks? What, what, Phantom Menace cut school. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I went, I was a senior in high school. Like me and a whole yeah. we all went. We saw the movie. Yeah. After the movie, we I was like, this that was awesome. That was fucking great. <laughs> As the day went, yeah. I was like, huh. No, I, don't, uh -huh. I don't think it was awesome as I thought it was. Like, yeah, like, you I know why? Yeah. Movie. You're probably like, like when I saw the same thing, I was like, that Darth Maul dude, he's pretty Yo, badass. Was, yeah, then but, you're like, huh. Yeah, then uh, I had to remember uh, the I other stuff. Who the fuck came up with Jar Jar Banks? Oh, you know what? Everybody, I do want to say this before we get going here tonight. As we've been doing, I'm just so pissed off right now thinking about Jar Jar Binks. That's what I'm saying. I'll digress from aliens <laughs> yeah. to Jar Jar Binks. And you know, everybody, this if you is, haven't, it's an aliens episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, my exactly. gosh. If you haven't followed Matt on IG, check out Matt Randar. Yeah. We'll do a giveaway this week talking about protagonists, antagonists, and shit. And we'll get, we'll do another follow up of this show. Uh, Matt will has also been on the protectors. He's been on the show. We're going to do another round table. Matt, Matt yeah. will be back in the future. But if you haven't checked out Matt's Etsy, go to Etsy.com backslash shop backslash battle tribe. But if you just type in battle tribe Etsy, you will find his gear and his uh, his wares. I have it all over my office, my studio. I should call it a studio because who if you've been in clown motel too, you you have a studio. But anyway, please check out uh, Matt on IG. Please buy the the Princess Leia shirt because it's fucking the best shirt ever. And then also check out BC Sanders on IG is at bcsanders.com. And also, if you haven't subscribed, left a comment to the the protagonist antagonist um, podcast. We have it out there. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple iTunes. On everything you can imagine. But please check it out. Uh, Matt, you got anything else? Follow up? No. That, thanks for having me on the show. If you haven't seen Aliens, you need to see it. <laughs> oh my God! If you haven't seen Aliens, please watch it tonight. Have a few drinks. Watch Stable. it.
I was BC, say, what you got hey, for us, brother? Yeah, I was going to say there was a comment earlier about announcing the movies, you know, upcoming movies coming. Oh, yeah. What do we got next so, week? Yeah, so we've got next week uh, Marcus Torgerson. Oh, just, yeah. Just Google that, dude. Check him uh, out. He's awesome. I love on Marcus. IG Live. Like, it's like one of the nicest guys in the world. Um, his background's Krav Maga, but like, he's, he's just a really a cool guy. Dude, yeah, yeah. He's, but anyway, he, he we're going to cover They Live. John yes. oh, yeah, that's a classic. Uh, hopefully, if scheduling everything works right, Matt Eversman, who oh, was uh, Ranger during yeah. Somalia, awesome. uh, he wants to do Jaws. Oh, so oh do Jaws. Jaws. Yeah. we might have to, you know what? We may actually have to start bringing in like an extra person or two because so yeah. many people, yeah, I yeah. Think Matt I'm, needs I'm to be that. a co host. That's what I'm saying. I also yeah. think I think that we need to bring Matt on and he gets to pick the movies. But Jason gets to pick the trivia questions <laughs> and put into the test because he was impressive earlier, man. He was. I have come man. here to chew bubble gum. No. It, let's. You know what? <laughs> Fuck it. We're gonna do. We're gonna get kicked off of YouTube right now. No. Everybody, <laughs> let's watch this before we get going tonight. And uh, Matt, you are actually, if you'd like to be a co-host eventually. No, oh, yeah, like, absolutely. You're absolutely because yeah. we get the more the merrier. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. But every we, everybody next week we are doing this classic movie. Rip, Roddy. Mm. Yes. Mm. And we're going to get kicked <laughs> off of YouTube right after this clip, everybody. And if you haven't... Oh, this is the best thing. I did a TikTok about this. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. Yes, and I'm all out of bubble all gum. Out of bubble. <laughs> He's like, Fuck you. boom. <laughs> Next week, everybody, they live. Rowdy, Roddy. It's <laughs> <laughs> a shotgun. He's got a shotgun. Oh, just do him. Do him. Long hair. Mama don't like tattletales. Oh, so <laughs> yes, oh, where'd he go? Oh. He's like, what? <laughs> okay, everybody. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and we will see you next week. Take care.